Hello everybody, my name is Keechan and this is my top 10 tips for Stone Shard. This little gem of a game came out recently and I've been playing it a whole lot. So today I want to share with you some of my experiences and help you optimize your adventuring in this awesome little game. I just want to mention real quick that this guide assumes that you have a basic understanding of the game already and or have at least played the tutorial. So before we actually start, I'm going to show you the first thing that everyone should do as the very first thing when they come out of the tavern. You want to go to this little hut here. In here you will find some basic gear that will help you kickstart your journey. You're stealing it from the town guard, but trust me, they don't need it. No one ever attacks the town. You can sell them if you don't want uh, to keep them, but the bow will always be nice for any character that doesn't start with a bow. Also make a note that upstairs in this very same building is where the village elder lives and this is the guy that will give you the quests once you are ready to start going on your first adventure. Without further ado, let's move on into tip number one. I have a leaving town checklist that I'm following because it's easy to forget. So that's the first tip and the checklist goes as follow. Before leaving town you should always repair all your items, stock up on arrows, Stock up on food and medical supplies and refill your water skin. So let's just go over quickly where you can do these things. The repair, will ha you will have to do that at the smithy and the tailor and the carpenter down here, respectively, depending on what kind of items you are wearing. You buy items, sorry, you buy uh, arrows by the carpenter down here. And let's see, food you can always find up by these stalls here. You refill the water skin by this well right here. You just right click it and click refill water skin. You can also drink if you're already thirsty. And for the final one, that will be the medical supplies are found by the herbalist down here. And tip number two is expanding on the first one, which is the recommended medical supplies. My recommended medical supplies. You should always Leave town with a bare minimum of, I believe, uh, two splints, like this. They are very, really, really cheap and they will help you treat injuries. You will Hopefully you will have played the tutorial before watching or playing uh, and you will know how important it is to treat injuries. The two splints here can help with that. You want to carry one bandage, which some characters start with, but not everyone does. And they are really cheap too, so you should always carry one. And then I... In, Prefer having two healing cells in your inventory. You start with one usually. You can buy one more. They are lifesavers and they can also, in theory, treat injuries, but you should use the splints for that. They just help you uh, recover from injuries faster. Then you always want to grab at least one antitoxin. I find that's a really good thing to have. And one herbal extract. The antitoxin can be skipped if you're confident that you won't need it but it's nice to have so consider it and then you can buy uh, the the herbalist in the first town will always have all kinds of plants the the two i like the most is the bog bean that helps with pain re reduction which the herbal extract also does but it's more expensive so usually you won't just want to have one bog bean in your inventory and one mind ward for managing uh, your sanity and morale Tip number three. Tip number three is pretty straightforward. It's just never buy lockpicks. You start with a set of lockpicks and you can buy more. Most people, I think, will be tempted to buy lockpicks uh, or a crowbar, which can do sort of the same. Uh, you should never buy these two items. Don't waste money on them. In the current state of the game, uh, you will always succeed in lockpicking whenever you try it. So there's no reason to ever carry more than one stack. Um, this is on the roadmap to be fixed, but as of my recording and playing this game, don't buy lockpicks, save yourself the trouble. Tip number four, aggro carefully. So you have stocked up on your items and you are ready to venture out into the wild. You go exploring and you come upon a group of enemies. My advice here is to aggro carefully. What I mean is that you want to catch the attention of one of the enemies, you just go close enough to catch the attention of any one enemy. Then you run a few steps back and let him come towards you. Use whatever ranged maneuverability you have to whittle them down. That's always a good idea. And then the important part is you separate them from the group. If you get surrounded early on or even into the late game, Stone Shot will kill you. Everything in this game is very dangerous. 
even wolves or dogs. Don't don't get cocky, kid. Listen to my advice. Act real carefully. Uh, I have a sub section of this tip, which is don't be afraid to be a coward. If you end up aggroing a bunch of enemies at the same time, run away, run off the map tile, reset. If you have to, just keep running, keep running until you're back in town. Don't be afraid to be a coward. You will vastly improve your chances of beating this game. Following up on the previous tip, tip number five is always use the bow. I showed you how to get the bow in the starting town. Always use the bow even if you're playing a, a pyromancer or a melee character you think you might not need a bow, you're wrong. The bow has the longest range of any weapon in the game. Landing a shot with your bow will always aggro an enemy and that will pull them away from the group, allowing you to aggro safely at the longest distance possible. Always use the bow. One quick detail about the bow that you should know is sometimes you can end up in a situation like we are right in the spot here. I'm trying to click this guy and it, the bow won't shoot despite me being both in range and in vision of this guy. So what you need to do in these cases, you can click control and you get like an attack a specific order and then you are allowed to target the enemy as it, well, I, I, I'm assuming that's just a the mechanical bug, something that I'm sure will be fixed soonish, but right now that's the workaround to that. Tip number six inventory management is worth it. In Stone Shard, you have a very limited inventory space and it is at a premium. All the equipment that you find can be sold back in town, and some of it is worth more than others. No brainer. But what you need to do is very carefully consider what items to keep. Uh, you can check the prices on each of them, and you want to, of course, keep the ones with the highest price. And at some point when you are about to leave a dungeon, you should then consider throwing away some of your medical supplies, like the herbs and the splints are very, very cheap to buy. The same goes for some of the food. You can just eat it and uh, or drop it. It's not worth as much as the items. You have to be very careful about what medical supplies you drop. You might want to keep uh, one healing salve and one splint and one bandage in, in the inventory, at least, depending on the distance you are from the town. The further away you are, the more you should keep. Same goes with food. Moving on, tip number seven is always check for traps. Don't underestimate checking for traps. You can run into some really, really nasty traps in the dungeon. You don't have to do it in the wilderness, just do it in dungeons. Every time you move on and your vision covers a whole new area, just tra check for traps. Just make it a habit. Every time you enter a new room, check for traps. Every time you enter a new corridor, just hit the t check for trap button. I mean, a splint isn't that expensive, but you take damage, it slows you down. If you're running low on splints or, or if the host help you, you are already out of splints and you get a walk into a trap and you get an injury, you might just be done for. It does take a turn, which I know every turn is a time unit, so it does mean that you thirst and uh, get hungry faster, but I think that is a very insignificant part compared to not stepping onto a trap. So always check for traps, it's worth it. And that's it for tip number seven. Tip number eight is pretty straightforward it is cursed items are awesome and i'm sh gonna show you th three examples here that i found throughout my uh, ad adventure since the early access released the, every cursed item consists of four parts that we should examine and understand in order to really know what's going on here the first part is the name of the curse which is of course the most interesting part the curse of core dust suffer joy or ever fear in these cases and they lead sort of into what, what comes after. And then they usually have a significant bonus, which is super cool, and therefore you should consider using them. The next part, the third part, is a the trade-off, the curse in, in question. And in every case I've found here, it's always a 5% chance to do some bad stuff each turn. So if you think about it, that means every 20 turns, on average, you will suffer the penalty. And if you think about how much 20 turn is, uh, that's usually 
not more than once per combat. It's more about when you're running across the world map, what's it gonna do to you. The one over here that loses morale is pretty bad. But the one that loses max health isn't that bad because max uh, because health is regained pretty quickly. The one that increases pain each turn is also kind of vivid. You have to think about whether or not you want to use these cursed items. And then the fourth part is very simply a, a magic enchantment like any other magic weapon. So you get a magic weapon that has a massive bonus and a small trade-off. That Not a small one necessarily, but something to think about. I think in most cases you will want to use a cursed item if you find it and it is already within your repertoire of items. So definitely something to think about. It's just a really fun mechanic. I love that cursed items are not just strictly bad items, but more like uh, really powerful items with a harsh drawback so you have to really make a careful decision you do have to know that if you put on a cursed item it will lock into your inventory and you cannot remove it without using a specifically called disenchantment scroll so and that goes to if you put on uh, you can equip unidentified items but if it turns out that it's a curse you can't unequip it again and you still don't know what it does if you're running around in a dungeon without an identify scroll and it might be something that kills you so that makes you maybe not want to always equip unidentified items that you find even though it looks like it's a cool thing that's sort of it for tip number eight tip number nine is to sell items to the appropriate merchants so you arrive back in town and you've gathered fat stacks of loot that you want to sell to make a profit off of your adventurers. In Stoneshire it makes a big difference which vendor you sell individual items to. As a general guideline, you want to sell the uh, items like the same place where you want to repair them. So metal items by the blacksmith and wooden items by the carpenter, cloth items by the tailor. But then there are some trade goods and stuff that that sell for more at specific vendors. And I don't know all of them, but I'll give you some general tips here. So like the tailor, for example, buys hides from animals at a higher price. And the blacksmith here pays more for most metal objects like nails and iron ingots. Also most jewelry pays for more at the, the blacksmith. Then the, the vendor here, the non-food vendor in the town square pays a lot for most items. Um, like normal trade goods and stuff. And then alcohol you can sell for more in the tavern, which is kind of cool. You, you would expect that to be the case. For most of the items, it makes sense if you think about it, but for your own sake, go and check the prices uh, at, at each vendor until you are familiar with the selling prices to make sure that you're not missing out on valuable profit. Tip number 10, the final one, is keep an eye on sanity and morale. You don't necessarily want to keep it high. I'm featuring two uh, negative traits that you can get from having low sanity, which is masochism and megalomania, both of which are kind of like the curses are some trade-offs. I think megalomania is strictly bad, and I'll show you a short clip about that in a second. And then masochism here kind of comes with some benefits, but primarily debuffs but uh, like like with the curses the trade-offs can be kind of cool and maybe fun to play with so if you want to play an insane mage like i did you can test these out and maybe you can discover more fun insanities that lie ahead in stone shard if you keep morale and sanity high this is where you will see the, the buffs known as heroism and optimism and i think also second wind has to do with sanity and morale these are very very good things that you can get from having high sanity and morale what you want to do to make sure that you have high sanity and morale there are a few treatments that you can apply to your character to keep sanity and morale in check morale i think grows over time on its own but other than that you can consume the herb bought at the herbalist in town known as mind ward shown here and then you can also sleep at the tavern those are the two main ways of gaining sanity and morale back and then that's it for my top 10 tips for stone shard i have one final easter egg tip that isn't really a tip but it comes here at the end and it's simply to just have fun with the game 
stone shard in its current state is not complete and it's not a uh, a very long game but you can have fun with it every build is viable if you play it right and the most important part is not to com complete the game or or get through it complete all the missions it's just do whatever build you find fun. If you want to do an insane character with cursed items, go ahead and do it. Have fun with it. Mix different skill trees together. Experiment with what works and just uh, explore the world. There are a lot of little Easter eggs and a lot of details to embrace and have fun with in this game. You will be surprised, I hope. Not so much if you've watched all my videos, but then I, I do recommend everyone to go out and play the game yourselves, of course. I'm certainly having fun with it and I will continue to do so. And you certainly don't have to min-max everything in the game like I'm doing in these tips. You can relax and enjoy the game at your own pace and just experience uh, the world as it is and do it your own way. You can set little challenges for yourself, like I saw a guy playing with dual wielding shields, that's a thing. And maybe you want to do a run without wearing any armor, running around naked. Who, who, who knows? Let me know what you think would be a cool challenge. I might even do a video on it. That would be... Uh, I would hardly recommend that. So this has been my top 10 tips for Stone Shard. I hope you guys enjoyed. This was my first time ever making like a tip guide for any kind of game. It's not something I usually do. I mostly do just do gameplay. So I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you have some more tips in the comments down below for other players to use. And uh, beyond that, just go out and play the game and have fun with it. Stone Shard in its current state, not even complete, is one of the best games I've ever played in the dungeon crawling RPG genres. It has so much love poured into it, so many details, little things that you can, you will appreciate that you will never find in any other games outside of playing Dungeons and Dragons in real life or similar games. Uh, with those words, I think I, I've said everything that I can say about Stone Shard. I love this game. I hope you will enjoy it too. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And that's it, folks. Thank you for watching and see you around. Bye-bye.